Hello and welcome to the randomised gaming first play of Mario Kart 8. Yes, Mario Kart 8's been out for just over a week now and we here at Randomised Gaming have decided to actually go and just give it a first play and see what we actually think. On a mess of the review websites, we've actually purchased a copy for real and want to know whether it's actually worth your £40 or $60. So we're going to take a quick look at Grand Prix. We're going to play through a whole championship on 50cc and we're then going to look into the battle mode after we play through the championship. Now, I'm Random Gamer Rhythm and I'm going to be your host. And we also have... I'm Random Gamer Dragoon. And Random Gamer Dragoon is also our driver for this first Grand Prix. And actually, he's the driver for all three Grand Prix. So as you can see, following on from some of the early, later Mario Karts, again, this one includes customization options. Uh, there are an awful lot of customization options, as you can see, and there's quite a few characters. Now, there's, of course, quite a few secret characters to unlock, and there's also quite a lot of customization options to unlock. So we're going to have a quick, as you can see, a quick look through the various options and engine speed, acceleration, weight, handling and grip. Now, interestingly, what we've seen is from having a bit of a play around it, we've been able to uh, gather that if you go for speed and speed and acceleration, you seem to be winning the race is the easiest that way. So we noticed a few of the, there's a particular few setups, certainly online, we've had a few matches online as well, and you see particular people using particularly the same setup. So I was actually spectating while Dragoon did this uh, whole run, so it's going to be an interesting experience for stream. Now this is Mushroom Cup Mario Kart Stadium. And it's actually very reminiscent of the first track on the GameCube as well, I felt. And that's, that's a little honk horn there, isn't it, where the little guy jumps in? Yeah, that's the honk horning. But basically, uh, we obviously can't capture the footage on the gamepad, but uh, if there's a button on the gamepad to act the honk horn, that you saw the fact that will cause the character to jump. Um, from a design perspective, the gamepad is quite badly implemented in this. Uh, you've got a lot of problems with it in the fact that to look, you have to actually look away from the screen. If you notice the screen now, there's no map part, which traditionally has always been on the Mario Kart games. The map part is on the Wii U gamepad. The problem with this is if you look away from the screen, you often start to crash your career off the screen because of the events happening on the screen always very fast in Mario Kart games. It's a very poor design, frankly. Yeah, I should also mention as well what, what we've seen from two players. You can see Dragoon's just driving off the track there. But um, in two player as well, because it's only on the gamepad, it never actually appears even in like two player mode. So player two can't ever see where he is in the race and where the competitors are. And it's a really, really poor design decision from Nintendo. It's actually one of the first negatives we noticed straight off the the bat. Now, I've not seen many other people complaining about it, but it should be. It's a really bad decision. I'm sure you, Miyamoto, possibly needs to think of it harder next time, although I'm not actually sure if he does that much designing on any of these games anymore. It's just sort of a producer credit these days, which generally means they don't tend to do a lot. I mean, graphically, this is definitely one of the most impressive, and as you can see, there's lots of at least breaks there. Like, oh, yeah, that's the back camera range, so you can actually look behind you. I'm not, not sure if you can do some of the earlier, like, Previous skills from Mario Kart was certainly one of the first ones I've really noticed, and it's really helpful. But and see lots of look behind the snes camera angle, so it's nothing that new. Okay, and my memory is playing too quickly. But this is another one of the new features with gliding one as well. It's quite a nice. Yes, the first time it's been in the home console, it was previously in the 3DS version, and it, it's. The races are three laps again, unlike the early ones where they were something like the five laps, certainly in the original screen. I mean, as you can see there, you've got lots of screens. Graphically, this looks very pretty, and it's got some low lilies. It's like just coming up there, the spinning helicopter machine that's actually bound to used in Super Mario World. I mean, there's lots of little design nods to the various characters. I mean, you see dry bones of various other characters throughout the stages waving to you, etc. So there's a whole range of sort of characters from Mario's history in this, which is a really nice... Uh, I mean, the big new feature in this one is the anti-grab mode that's going on now where your tyres go blue and you're hit to drive up um, large inclines or the walls vertically. Obviously, when you're actually playing a game, um, though you can see the, the track is quite large, surprisingly when you're playing a game, you don't notice it that much. You just, it just feels like you don't really feel like you're actually driving vertically. You just feel that you are just racing along a normal sort of level track. Now, I'm just going to show you a quick play with the highlight reel, which you may have already seen a lot of people playing with. Certainly, the Luigi Dest uh, videos all around on YouTube have been playing through the highlight thing. Because what we actually noticed is 
everyone has the death stare. Basically what it is is that whenever you connect to the character via an attack, the player character, whichever character you are, so in fact you can do a Mario death stare if you want, you can do a Bowser death stare, their character turns in a rather weird 90 degree angle to uh, face the person they've just hit. So it is, it's a little bit freaky. It actually looks a bit odd because Luigi and Mario, their heads don't look natural when they do it and neither do a couple of the other characters. So it's, it's, I think that's part of the attraction for why it's sort of become quite an instant success on YouTube. But as you can see from the replay feature there, you can slide it down, you can reverse it. You can even change who you want to target on the replay, so it's quite nice. Admittedly, you can't select which sections you want to use for the replay, the game automatically decides for you. So sometimes you can get some really nice replays, other times from what we've seen, the automated replays can be a bit lame. But as you can see here, we've got Luigi, Mario, Lemmy, Waluigi, and you can change the duration, the focus, and even the sound effects if you want the sound slow down. And you can rewind it and fast forward, so it's replaying it again. Okay, so this is the edited video. You can see we've now, part, we said we'd target Lemmy as one of the characters. Instead, it's also the first Mario Kart game that I, I've known. I'm not the only one I haven't played the 3DS one, but as far as I'm aware, this is the first one with the Pooka Kids in. And it's actually really nice to see them since they originally appeared in Super Mario Bros. 3 and have never actually appeared in the Mario Kart. They didn't even make a cameo appearance in the original Super Mario Kart, which was a bit disappointing. I mean, interestingly, you'll notice we don't actually yet have the Koopa Kids as playable characters. Um, bizarrely, most of the secret characters you can race against before you've even unlocked them, which is a slightly odd sort of perspective. There's no kind of surprise to it. You'd have thought they'd at least locked them out until you'd unlocked them, so then you could race against them, rather than racing against them straight off of the bat. But I think a few of them are locked out, but not many. Indeed, none of the secret characters appear to be new to this version. Um, they all appear to be characters that have been in previous games, um, with the exception of being a version of Peach, which is just a, a colour reskin, so there's nothing really new here in terms of additional characters. It does feel a bit like they have rushed this out slightly. Okay, this is Mushroom Cup Water Park, and this is the uh, second stage. I should point out there's actually two sets of tracks. It, in use, when you go back to the uh, GP selection, the top four are your, your classic four and the, the new Wii U tracks. The bottom four are basically a classic tour and feature the selection of tracks from the, all the previous Mario Kart games. So there's stuff like Turnpike, Tail from the N64 one. You've got, oh, Donut Plane. You've got one. Oh, bizarrely, there's only one from Super Mario Kart, but. You get a good selection from the N64, a couple from the Wii, a couple from the DS, etc, etc, you get the other picture. I mean this is uh, again a really nice stage, I really love the little uh, sort of underwater submarine. Basically this is Mushroom Cup and this is also this is Water Park and it's just really lovely the way you just move between the water and the above ground so you get all like, the little rides and attractions going on, all the little characters enjoying attractions, it's a really nicely put together level. Yeah, it's kind of got basically a theme park theme to it. One of the nicer levels in the game, I think. Here we come out with a jump. You can also glide under the Ferris wheel there. Again, uh, you notice the coins, should have mentioned them earlier. Basically, as with previous Mario Kart, you can collect up to 10 coins, and 10 coins gives you the most speed increase. Although what we've seen, the coins aren't as good as just having some really nice uh, and the, uh, bonus features. Obviously as well, as we go around corners you'll also notice the blue uh, flame coming and then the red flame. That's good for using the drift so you can uh, glide around the corners, get drift, release the drift and get some extra speed boost. Yeah, so we're on to the third lap now. We can see the Marine Coast. There, I mean, there are some nice touches on the stage as you go around. You see the little toad and the other sort of guys from Delfino Park and the from Mario Sunshine as well. I mean, as you can see in the distance, it, it does go up vertically, but when you're actually racing, it doesn't give the illusion that you're going up vertically that well, I don't feel. It feels like you're just racing on a fixed plane. I mean, some people could argue that that is actually the intended um, concept, that it doesn't feel like you're racing up death. Uh, you kind of do want a little bit of it. I, I think it's nice, the anti-grav mode, but it doesn't, 
it doesn't actually you don't you don't notice it while racing you really don't notice it so again I, I do love the way you sort of train stress from water so you've got, got some water particle effects there as you leave the water but it does it does look very impressive the whole sort of bay And the AI functions pretty much as before. Unfortunately, there is um, slow car boost on, or elastic band racing, as we tend to call it in the industry. It's a disappointing feature that Nintendo have again chosen to include this in Mario Kart instead of properly balancing the races for each difficulty. What should be happening correctly is that um, each site, and 50 cc's, the AI should be timed to basically finish the race at a certain time. It's not particularly good. At 100 cc's, they should be timed to finish the race at a much faster time, but still fairly beat. On 150 cc's, they should be timed to finish a race at a very, very hard prospect. The problem with elastic banding is it's actually random whether you can finish first or not because you just constantly speed boost and slow down. So often you can be in first right at the finish line, and the AI is being elastic banded to shoot far past them. At that point, they take the race. So it's an aggravation. It's been in the Mario Kart series since the beginning and. Nintendo need to really take it out because it does spoil a lot of the fun later on and ruin the single players in many aspects. One of the other uh, slightly odd things you may notice is there's no lap time displayed on screen. Bizarrely, throughout uh, any of the race modes, there's no indication of how fast you're performing, so you really have no idea. Um, obviously, with the rubber banding AI catching up with you, you don't know whether you've done better one lap or another. It seems very odd that this kind of basic racing game functionality is not on screen during the race too. Yeah, I mean, it's really basic functionality, guys. Just stuff they put in Super Mario Kart. The fact it's missing here, I mean, I think some of it was on the gamepad, but again, it's not convenient to look at the gamepad at all, and it does make you wonder exactly what Nintendo are thinking, because the gamepad itself is a big, big problem with the Wii U. It's not particularly pleasant to controller to use, and as we found, you really you want to act. First thing you want to do is actually the gamepad and use a we had Controller Plus, which is much more comfortable, much more enjoyable experience. In fact, the gamepad is probably the worst controller I've ever used. It's just horrid. Indeed, along this line, one of the problems we do have with this is bizarrely, uh, when you turn on the Wii, Player One is automatically synced to the gamepad and they can't actually change the controller. So if Player One wants to use a different controller, you can't. The only way we were able to do this was to deliberately move the um, gamepad into another room in the house where you were no longer able to, to connect it to the Wii U, then turn on the Wii U with something like the normal Wii U Pro controller and then you could use the player one. Otherwise you can't and there's no configuration at all with this game and there's no option for menu to change any of the settings. It does feel very much as for like this has been rushed out very quickly. I mean because the lack of new characters again they mainly use sprites and animation from the previous Mario games that particularly Super Mario 3D World. They've done this to be cheap and to produce the quality. So basically it's like the Cooper kids are all in new Super Mario Brothers Wii U. They've just dumped their sprites from that game straight into this one. I should point out there is the usual array of power-ups. I mean there's a few new ones and annoyingly the blue shell is back as you can tell from the limited edition which came with a rather bizarre plastic blue shell but yep it's back so again I've watched as a, you've been sitting behind in second and someone else throws one and it takes out the guy in first uh, there's a few new power-ups the boomerangs have made it across from new Super Mario Brothers not new Super Mario Brothers uh, Super Mario 3D Land not Land, uh, Super Mario 3D World no, actually the other one, there's a couple, there's a few others, not many new power-ups, but one of the new ones that isn't mentioned is you can get the number 8 appear, and if you get that, you get 8 items suddenly appear around you, so that's really, really helpful. There's sort of 8 random items assigned to you, but it's, you get speed boost, shells, and everything at once. It's quite a rare power-up, I can't think if you actually managed to get one in this run, but it's very, very nasty if you do get it. Um, you also get a, a honker horn, which actually... Um acts as basically a defensive a weapon that can actually destroy any weapon that comes close to you, including blue shells. So if you are lucky enough to pick this up, keep hold of this item, because you can just destroy any incoming projectile. And fortunately, you are able to get this uh, power-up when 
the super horn. Yeah, you are able to get the super horn when you're in first place because one of the things you'll always notice in America, once you get higher up the um, racing leaderboard, you'll notice that a number of the power ups become locked out to you. So obviously, if you're in first, you're never going to get blue shell and you're not going to get three speed mushrooms either. Uh, the last but not least is I've actually managed to pull over the box to me. Uh, Piranha Palant. Although Pete's not a playable character from what we've seen, you do can now get your own pl Piranha Palant that your character holds for a short time. You basically eat every coin and attacks the enemies to get right past them. It's a nice enough one and it's enjoyable to watch. And as you can see, there's Dragoon failing miserably on that shortcut. I think you failed on that shortcut in every attempt to try and do it this time. Yeah. I'm not going to comment on the end of the race, but. Uh... <laughs> There are actually quite a few shortcuts. It's not as diverse as I feel as the original Super Mario Kart, but they're still quite novel. This stage in particular, there's a whole selection. Certainly, the bit you store in the centre arena, you can go left, right, or you can go straight down the middle, which is the fastest route. Um, we've got, you can actually drive on the side of the wall here. Another thing you see is you'll notice just, if you jump just right like you saw there, you'll actually get speed boost after the end of the jump and you can do that constantly. Again, the prompters are really nicely done. It's, you've got to be careful when you're driving, but it's really great to see them and all the characters in full-on Wii U glory. I mean, it really does look nice for my car game. That said, despite the fact it looks very good, it doesn't look anywhere near as good as the sort of final gen PS3 or Xbox 360 game. So I think Nintendo still have a way to catch up in the graphics department. But Nintendo's graphics haven't always necessarily been a strong point for Nintendo. Certainly, this game does look better than uh, the other sort of racing game on the uh, Wii. Uh, Sonic, Sonic All Star, Star Race is transformed. Is transformed. Yeah. Which, I mean, Sonic's quite a nice game, but I, I think the track design lets it down a bit. Although they try to capture the spirit, I don't think they quite capture the spirit of some of the games in Sonic All Star for Racing Platform. I think the tracks are slightly overly long. This gets the feel of Mario perfectly. The only thing I kind of wish is that there was a bonus. I, I know some people have spoken about this, is whether they were going to add Link or a few of the other, like Met Samus or Star Fox, just a guest driver. I think it would be quite a nice. Uh, idea or perhaps as another speculation we were talking about was if they did a sort of Smash Brothers karting game where basically you uh, do a mixture of all the characters and do various levels in the world. I think it depends on what your theme is, whether you want just a guest character or whether they actually go for full on with some Mario racing, some Metroid, some Star Fox, some F Zero. That would be quite a good mix. And as you can see there Dragoon was pipped at the last minute thanks to his uh, shortcut failure. <laughs> Now the other thing that's made a return is the stamps that were seen in uh, Super Mario 3D World, which are a novelty. They're mainly used for posting on the Miiverse, which is the uh, Wii U ch chat forum. It's a novel idea, but you, the Miiverse itself is a bit limited. And to be honest, it's it's a weird chat thing where you can talk to kids, basically, because the majority of them are But it's kind of weird you just post stamps, but it doesn't really the help much and I, I don't feel they add anything to the game because too often the stamps feature that they added into the Super Mario 3D world resulted in a post in the Mario board like every two seconds or something silly which sounds good but what it meant is there was no discussion you just got constantly weird and wonderful stamps posted everywhere and the other thing is kind of a bit spoilerific if you suddenly see oh this guy's done everything he's got this uber hard stamp so it's a bit disappointing now Single player overall we feel is very good and reverse breaking is very good. And we're going to go into the battle mode next. Now the battle mode is interesting. So as you can see we've unlocked the flower cut, we've unlocked a new character and you get a new stamp which you wish to post to the Miva. So here we go, this is battle mode. Now Usually battle mode is quite a strong mode, however in this one we've actually been quite disappointed with it. As you see we unlocked La Kitty, La, 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 La Kitty, La Kuta, ah, ah, ah. So 
searching Z, we're just selecting our setup. This is where I actually uh, join in, that's me, Riven, and I'm actually playing as Bowser, and Dragoon is playing as Lakitu or Lakita. I, I'm going to give up trying to pronounce his name. Now, one of the big things that we know for battle mode, and this is the crux of the matter, because you can't see the map, you can't, um, as the other player, see where the opponents are, so we rapidly found battle mode to be quite poor. The other thing is, you're no longer racing on custom preset battle tracks, you're just racing on standard race tracks, but you're racing on the race tracks that have a effectively a loop on it, because some of them don't have a loop, so you're only racing on them as a loop. So these are all the standard race nodes. You see Toad to Turnpike from N64, we've got Yoshi's Valley, we've got Donut Plains 3 and from the SNES one. So now you have to do, we set to three rounds. And basically it's the best of three rounds in this one. Now, as we rapidly found out, this is pretty awful, the battle mode this time around, isn't it? Yep. Yep. Yeah, um, basically the player with gamepad gets a massive advantage because they can see where everyone else is. Um, players who don't have the gamepad are driving around aimlessly trying to find one another. Basically, if you, if you don't screen peek, then you're pretty much stuck. Um, and if you've got four players, I imagine that would be pretty much impossible trying to screen peek over. Because you can see, I'm Bowser and I, I've got no idea. I'm literally having to chase the opponents down via eye, which isn't that helpful when you've got someone behind you. And the fact, I mean, even Mario Kart Wii has uh, specialist battler in it. This is just cheap, it's quickly done, and if anyone thinks Nintendo aren't panicking and rushing stuff around, then this is a prime example of it. It's not, the, the original SNES Super Mario Kart had a brilliant battle mode, because you were one on one, you were in a tight arena, it was specially designed, you know, you used to slide around corners, desperately trying to dodge the red shells. None of that is here, you're just driving along the standard track, it's too wide open, it's too easy to dodge stuff, and it's just very, very bland. Yeah, I mean, as you see, I'm, I'm Bowser, and I, I struggle to find anyone a lot of the time, because I've just got no, I'm just basically catching by hand. I, this stage, Toad's Turnpike, isn't too bad. A couple of the other stages, which are huge, are you're just literally driving around aimlessly. Um, now, one thing you didn't notice, as you can see there, I got eliminated. You can still grab power-ups and hit people when you're a ghost. If you're eliminated, you can still hurt people, which is interesting, because you couldn't do that previously. Or at least I should say in the previous cards. The only one I haven't played is um, the 3DS one at the minute. But this is, I mean, it, it's good, but this mode is just, just awful. It really is. It's, it's disappointing in comparison to battle modes from the previous game. I mean, I, I still have the iconic SNES one in my mind. I mean, it's nice that there's like 12 players battling it out. Well, I, at least I, it says there are 12 players because you get the uh, summary screen at the end. But Half the time, I, I was only sure if I saw five or six because you never seem to pass them. It is four players as well, and I imagine it might be a bit more fun with four players, but even still, you're still all running around a bit aimlessly trying to find one another, and the lack of the map just does not help. Really does not help in the slightest. Yeah, so for, the map is only on the gamepad, so obviously the, only the player with the gamepad can see it, assuming you're using the gamepad, haven't used some ghetto fix to get around it. Um, you know, an on-screen map would greatly solve this issue. Indeed, giving you smaller circuits for this mode, if they just made this circuit into a figure of eight, and just cut it down, it would have been so much nicer and more fun. It's just too big, and as you can see, we're dri I'm driving around aimlessly, trying to find, and in the end, you actually just take a hit. We noticed that once both player characters take a hit, the match automatically ends. Uh, I'm not entirely sure how it's scoring. I assume it's who's how long you last in comparison to the other competitors. So that, that's how I think it scores. I'm not entirely sure because it's not that clear at all. Okay, so the only novel thing is it does allow you to change the track after each race. So the second race we chose Yoshi's Valley. One of the things you'll notice about the classic track design from all these uh, stages is that um, the tracks have been made much wider now. Um, on the S64 one, Yoshi's Valley was quite notorious for having very narrow paths when you drove on that only one car could stand on, otherwise you'd fall off into the side of the cliff. That's all been changed to this version. The roads are much wider, 
and there's less skill involved. I mean, particularly when you look at Bowser now, that path after the egg on the original N64 is very narrow. Yeah, overall the track design, it's they're not really, they're more like themed on the previous levels, because they're, they're, they're they are heavy, complete redesigns. Disappointingly, um, you do get a second Rainbow Road, you get a new Rainbow Road, and they reuse the N64 one, which is probably one of the weakest Rainbow Roads. I much preferred the one using Double Dash, or the iconic original Rainbow Road where it all started, so I'm disappointed to see Nintendo didn't include the uh, Super Nintendo one. And the other thing is, the whole point about the Super Nintendo one was it was brutally hard because there wasn't a single fence anywhere in Rainbow Road. You could just fall off everywhere. And that's what made Rainbow Road so special because it was such a hard race. I feel in later Mario Karts they've really dumbed it down. and It's very de detrimental to players that they assume that they're just not good enough to race that well. And of course, when I was playing Mario Kart when I was about 12 and nipping around and uh, doing Rainbow Road as fast as possible without falling off. So... You could even lap players in the earlier games on the Super Mario Kart, so it's disappointing to see Nintendo basically treat children like they're not as good as games of what they were 10 years ago. And of course, they're probably better games than they were 10 years ago, because we've now got whole generations just growing up on video games. And as you can see again, Battle Mode, I'm, again, I'm driving around aimlessly and taking damage as Bowser. I, I just kept, I just sort of see someone and just hope I found them. You see, they're just falling off spectacularly. So this is like so you see someone, you turn around because again, I, I, I had no map at all as I was playing Bowser, so I was trying to chase them down. But I think at the end of this one, actually, it took you out of I think I, you actually come on. Interestingly, if you look when I take out Dragoon, I don't appear on his map, so the invisible player can't see the 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 visible player can't see the invisible player on their screen. They just see a shell coming at them. They can only see it if they look on the other player's screen, which is quite naughty. Yep, here it is. It's coming up. Pow! So again, you can see we've got Rosalina and Lemmy, a few of the other secret characters, and then Toadette as well. So it's kind of disappointing that straight off the bat, even though we haven't unlocked them, they're visible for the other for the player scene. It's kind of a bit of a spoiler really, because you want to find out who the secret characters are. Um, you can unlock your Miis, as we've noted, and again, I, I'm not a big fan of the Miis. I much prefer the characters. You don't see them too much online, so... And the last stage is Toad Harbour. This is quite an interesting one. It's got a little monorail going through the whole stage. But again, this is quite a large stage with top and bottom layers at a few parts. There's a bit during like a market stall area where you can go top, you can go above the market stall and underground. So again, I I was racing around a lot of the time trying to find people to hit. Interestingly as well, compared to the racing mode, uh, in this particular, in the battle circuit version of this course, some of the um, shortcuts have actually been cut out. Now, in the case here, you'll see a, a potential for a shortcut. This doesn't work in the racing mode either, but as you can see, I'm waiting for the tram to come along. And if this was a, an older Mario Kart game, this probably would have been a shortcut. So, follow people around. You see he's driving a little driving tram. Driving in, driving the tram. I'm going to drive in. The gate's open. Potential for a really good shortcut. Nope. It's an invisible wall. wall. That's a bit disappointing, actually. You, in the early as work. I go around this corner here, that path on the left. You oh see, yeah, that had normally has that a... has ramps in the race mode to jump over, so it gives you an extra jump. That's been cut out for the battle mode, so it's missing some of the more sort of technical jumps that could have been used to say keep your character safe. And again, as you just saw there, we have the top and the below bit. So if you're the top, you won't be able to get into the guys racing underneath you. And again, there's another branching bit just above. Uh, you now Dragoon. So again, th this stage really is not great for battle. It, it looks really nice. The trams going around it look fantastic, a good fun. But as a battle stage, it's incredibly messy. I mean, all the stages in this, uh, one of the advantages about all the stages is they have very vibrant uh, characters full of life. So you see Toads bucking around, guys from Sunshine Island or Port Yeah, Dino Delphino. You've, Island, got, you've got characters from every Mario game going. Dry bones, even ch cheapy cheats flying around in a few stages. It's great to see the side. Incidentally, I should really point out that it's great that the first uh, Wii U Super Mario Brothers game was New Super Mario Brothers Wii, and 
second one was Super Mario 3D World, and of course there was the Luigi expansion. And the re- we think they basically Nintendo borrowed assets from both Wii U Mario games to help make this one at a slightly quicker pace. And I actually kind of wish they'd used more assets because there's a lot of content that's just not here. It, it is disappointing compared to some of the other Mario Karts how much content this game lacks, isn't it? Mm. So we're coming to our end of our time in the commentary, as you can see now, we've just got about 40 seconds left. So the battle mode is surprisingly disappointing and it does feel a bit underwhelming. It's probably partly why there was already rumours of a DLC expansion. Now, they've apparently been shot down because it looks like they were nicked. Someone had basically very sneakily taken a video and then edited a picture, but it, there is some people out there hoping that they might do some DLC. Now, I think there's already a going to be Mitsubishi or something DLC? Yeah, there's a Mercedes uh, car DLC coming, but uh, it's three in the US. They haven't announced anything for Europe or um, Japan, I believe. But um, it's a very minor thing. It's just a car skin mod, and real cars in Mario Kart? I'm not sure. It's, but it's interesting to see well. that some suggestion, is there going to be future DLC? I think it's just going to be wait and see. I think certainly they can definitely expand the character roster significantly, even if you just include the characters you took out from Mario Kart Wii U, Diddy Kong, Dry Bones, Mario Kart uh, Wii there, just Mario correct. Kart Wii, yeah, sorry. Uh, Dry Bones, Diddy Kong, Funky, Funky Kong, Dry Bells, uh, even uh, Magic Cooper, who never quite made it into a Mario Kart. Yeah, time. Magic Cooper is interesting. He was originally pictured in preview shots on the N64 one, but he was subsequently replaced by, I think it was Donkey Kong. Donkey Kong. So he's, he's always been someone who he kind of wanted to appear, but he's not yet appeared. And I don't know if he's in the 3DS one. He might have made it into the 3DS one, because I've not actually played that. Yep. That's it. Um, but that's it for our first play. It's, it's enjoyable. It's worth tracking down if you're a Mario Kart fan. It's got some problems, but overall it's a fairly solid single-player and multiplayer experience. 